Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're all well, whatever you are up to. Today I wanted to talk you through some of my tips for pressing and ironing when you're dressmaking because I think that it makes a huge, huge difference to the finish that you get on the garments that you make when you press and you iron properly. So I want to just sort of talk you through some of the terminology you might come across and some different tools that you can use as well. Um, I use some, some specific things when I'm ironing. There are other things that you can get as well but I'll show you what all the options are and sometimes it's just nice to see different ways to do things and it might give you a bit of an idea of how you could improve your own ironing and pressing if you're finding some things a little bit tricky when you're dressmaking. So first of all I want to talk you through the sort of basic terminology that you might come across. So press or pressing you will come across that quite a lot in sewing instructions so it might say something like um, press the seams open or press into place and um, something like that and it is different from actually ironing. So in this context, ironing is when you are ironing a sort of bigger surface of fabric. So you've got maybe like a big bit of fabric out over your ironing board and you're just kind of going for it, ironing back and forward. And then pressing um, or to press means just being a little bit more precise. So you're still using an iron and an ironing board, but you're putting pressure through the iron and you're being like a bit more accurate. So you're sort of doing something quite like a bit finer with like a bit more precision. Um, to a certain part of the fabric or, or the garment or whatever you're making. So ironing is like do 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 um, and then pressing is like just being a bit more precise and putting pressure through the iron as well. So that's kind of the most common sort of terminology that you're going to come across and that's that's what it means but I'll, I'll sort of go into that a little bit more as I show you all the different tools and things. So my basic sort of ironing setup is that when I am sewing and I'm dressmaking, I always have my ironing board out and I've always usually got my iron turned on as well. And it's quite handy just to sort of have an extra surface that you can stand at as well. So quite often I'll just sort of stand at the ironing board and pin and that sort of thing. Um, so I have um, this sort of special cover on my ironing board, which is um, this cover here. And it's like a grid that goes over it's like a cover a grid cover that goes over the top of it they come in two different sizes so we've got them in the shop and they come whether your iron board is a narrow one or a wider one and i think they're just really handy it kind of makes your iron board look a bit more sewing related so it just kind of looks nice and then also the grid that is on the iron board you can use that to, to press hems back or to to fold things back at an even amount if you're make, doing a hem or something so um, it's got a centimeter grid and then it's also got an inch grid as well I would say don't I, I wouldn't use it on um a, a, if you're measuring a larger amount if you're measuring like two or three or four or five centimeters then it's fine but um it might not be 100% accurate if you're measuring it over a bigger bigger surface area but I use it all the time for measuring smaller distances and um, I also make sure that underneath that cover there is a layer of extra kind of padding so on my ironing board I've actually got some curtain interlining which we do also have in the shop anyway but you could you know it's just like an extra bit of padding because the bottom of ironing boards some quite often they have that kind of metal sort of lattice grid on them and if you've not got enough padding between that metal bit and then your your top cover sometimes when you're putting pressure onto fabrics that that sort of bumpiness can kind of leave like a bit of a sheen on your fabric can like transfer that pattern up almost so it's nice to have a little bit of padding and because that extra padding will hold heat and steam as well it will help to almost press your garments from underneath so I would recommend that if you do have quite a thin sort of padding bit underneath your top cover that you get an extra layer in there um, as I said I just use curtain interlining because I just sort of had it about anyway but my mum always used to have a blanket under hers and um, I, I would say it needs to be it needs to be cotton or like a natural fiber and um, it will just get a bit sweaty and, and damp if it if it's got any synthetic fibers in it but yeah I would recommend having that as well and then I want to talk to you about the specific iron that I've got. So I don't have 
a huge amount of experience with lots of different irons so I'm not here to do like a witch guide to what iron you should get because I don't really I don't really know about lots of different irons but I do know about the one that I've got and and I think it's really good so uh, my personal iron that I use at home is a Phillips iron and the ones that we have in the studio that we use for the workshops are also a Phillips iron as well I think the ones we have for the workshops are a bit better than my own one at home but 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 both Philips irons that I've had have been really good. Um, the one that we use in the studio um, is this one here. So it's a Philips Azure. This is about four and a half years old now, probably just over that. So it is, it is quite old now. I'm not sure if they do this exact model anymore, but, um, and I can't even remember how much it costs. Sorry, this is turning out to not be a very good story about an iron, but I, I guess I'm just saying Phillips are good. Um, they've not sponsored this post or anything. That's just my experience and it has been good. And obviously they get used quite a lot in workshops as well and they have lasted quite a long time. The reason that I like it is because it's it's quite weighty, so it helps when you're putting pressure on things. It's also got a really, really good steam function as well. And steam is really, really important when you're ironing and pressing. So I always make sure that I've got water in my iron and then depending on the fabric and, and what I'm ironing, I'll, I'll have some degree of steam on. And um, steam really does help to set the fabric. So if you're pressing a hem, for example, or just a seam open and you've got steam in your iron and the iron is at a good temperature, it will just give such a much crisper, neater, nice finish. So steam is is definite, definitely, definitely good. And I all, as I said, I always make sure I've got water in my iron as well, because when you get that dry heat, it just doesn't have the same effect. And I find that it can sometimes leave a sort of sheen or almost very slightly discolour the fabric a little bit if the iron is quite hot and it's a dry heat as well. So steam, steam, steam. Um, then the next thing that I want to talk you through are just sort of other kind of things that you can get that might help with pressing that you might be doing with your dressmaking. Um, so the first thing is um, this stuff here, which is called um, flatter spray. And it's a bit like a sort of, kind of like a natural, friendly, um, not as harsh as starch. So it can help to gen gently stiffen fabrics to make them a little bit easier to work with. Um, it depends how much you put on. Um, it says here that you can just um, repeat as needed to till you get the desired stiffness. So it's, it's probably not gonna go like really, really stiff, but it just, it might make, might make things a little bit easier to work with. They also smell absolutely amazing. Um, they smell so good and you can get lots of different fragrances as well. So we have got Celebration, we have got Yuzu Clean with Appeal. Um, nice. And we've got Pineapple Grove and Scentless um, and then Fig Fresh Picked Clean. Very nice. Um, so these just make your things smell really nice as well. They are also really good um, for just getting crinkles out too. So if you have traveled somewhere and your things have got a little bit creased in your bag, then you can like spray all of this stuff on, hang it up and it helps to just sort of relax the creases out of it. So it's good for that too. Um, so yeah, you can just, if you've, whether you've got like a large surface to iron or you're doing a bit more kind of specific pressing, you can just spray that on. Um, and again, that will, that will generate steam because it's, it's wet. Um, so that will help to just set things in place a little bit more. I don't always use it, but it's just like a nice little addition and it does smell really nice as well. Um, so for those instances where you are doing something that's a bit more precise, like you're turning a hem, or maybe it's like a narrow hem and you have to be quite kind of precise when you're turning the fabric over and you do have steam in your iron. Um, I've found that my fingers can sort of withstand quite a lot of heat over time, but um, sometimes you do still catch yourself, so you have to be careful. But um, Prim have got these, they're called silicon finger guards here, so they come in a little packet like that, and there's three different sizes. And you can just put them over your fingers um, like that, and then they just help to sort of grip um, grip the fabric a little bit and then also just stop you from kind of burning yourself too. So they have got um, little kind of lumpy, bumpy bits on them which will help to grip the fabric. Um, and then yeah, they're just going to stop you from sort of burning the tips of your fingers. Um, 
I have used them on occasion. As I said before, my fingers have actually just sort of built up some kind of asbestos resistance over time. Um, and I can actually handle quite a bit of heat in my fingers. But if you find that a problem and you're finding it hard when you're pressing and you're hurting your fingers, then that can just be like a little sort of extra protection for you and um, as I said they are good for gripping the fabric as well so if you are like if you've sewn and um, say, say just a really simple example is say you've sewn a cushion cover um, and you're turning it inside out and you're trying to get that that's that that seam right to the edge of the fabric to like really turn it properly out these will just help to sort of grip the fabric and you can almost then kind of just like roll the seam up to the top it just gives you more purchase or more grip on the fabric too if you're somebody who's got quite dry hands and you might find it hard to sort of grip or control fabric a lot then these these silicon guards will also help for that as well um, the other thing that I quite often use, not just in pressing, but marking things out as well, um, is this, this seam gauge here. So if you don't have that gridded cover on your iron board, then you can use this to help with hems as well. So you can just fold it up and, and measure it and check. And it, because it's a ruler, um, it's, it's just a bit easier to, to line things up rather than having your measuring tape when you're pressing. You don't actually press this. Don't, let, don't put your iron on top of this. It will melt. Um, but it's just good for some of measuring things if you're if you're being a little bit more accurate these little lines here are, are good for for marking as well so if you were you know if you had to mark a, a two centimeter distance you can just sort of put the edge of your your chalk or your your marker just in there to, to give an even line and um, so that is that the thing that I do use quite often, it's very useful if you're doing sleeves or cuffs or if you're making kids clothes as well and you're finding it hard to get to get things sort of on your ironing board to, to iron into them is um, a sleeve board which is this thing here. So you've probably seen this before like a little mini ironing board. So um, it is great as I said if you're doing sleeves or, or so something something that's small like kids clothes um, or if you're or, or if you're maybe like sewing gathers or um, you just yeah you just need something a bit narrower to get your fabric round and um, it's really good and this one comes with the little grid on it as well so you've got um that's a, a centimeter grid and then a two centimeter grid too and um, so that's quite handy to have the alternative to that sleeve board would be um, a sleeve roll which is this thing here so it's going to work in a similar way you can just sort of shove it into your thing that you're pressing and then press around it and um, it's quite good just if you're um, sewing something 3D as well. What what's what's even more useful for that is is um, the tailor's ham, which comes like that. Tailor's ham. You guys will definitely come across that before, but it's really good for darts or shaping sleeve heads. And um, this one's been well used in the studio, which is why it's a bit faded. But um, and you can make your own ones of these too. And um, but we've got we sell both the ham and the sleeve roll as well. So they're they're like the same thing. They're just different shapes basically. And um, but yeah, they're good for more kind of molding fabric because when you make clothes, the clothes are three D. So then it's quite good to have an, a three D surface to be able to press onto. And um, then the next thing that I wanted to show you is this ironing cleaner so what you will find over time just it just naturally kind of happens anyway despite best efforts not to is that your iron can get a bit dirty over time so um, especially if you use interfacing sometimes you might just get a little bit of glue on the iron and that kind of thing or you might accidentally have the iron a bit too hot and it can just sort of look a bit kind of burnt over time and um, so you can use this stuff here which is iron cleaner and um, comes in a little packet like this and it's basically like a, a stick um, here so you turn your iron on and you sort of wipe that all over the face of your iron and it will melt so put something underneath it like a scrap of fabric or um, maybe some some pattern paper or grease proof paper or something so it doesn't drip all over onto your ironing board and um, but just sort of rub that on and you it w you will see the the sort of blackness or the the dirtiness in the face of the iron just coming off and then you can just use a, a cloth just to sort of wipe the excess off and um, and it and it will make a big difference to the face of your iron it just prolongs the life of the iron a little bit more and if you're using um, lighter weight fabrics it just stops you getting that kind of grime on it sometimes and um, so it's worth while doing that every so often with the iron cleaner and um, so they're the they're all the sort of like gadgets and stuff that 
you can kind of get. As I said, I don't, I don't have, I don't use all of these on a regular basis, um, because I've just kind of found my own ways to iron certain things. Um, lots of people love the ham, but I've just kind of, I guess, I've just found other ways to iron in 3D over time. Um, but as I said, it's just nice to see sort of different things that you can get. And if you are finding it hard to get the shaping right on darts, then a tailor's ham can would maybe be quite a good investment to make. Um, so this video is linked to a blog post and I'll put links to all of these different things that I've talked about. Um, we sell everything apart from the iron itself and the actual iron board, but we've got the cover and stuff as well. Um, so you can get all of that on our on our website. Um, but finally, I just wanted to sort of give you some other tips that you can use when you're ironing too, because um, I just think that it can make such a difference to the garments that you make. So. Um, when you are ironing, sometimes you might have to almost like put a little bit of tension under the fabric. So instead of just kind of like plonking the fabric down and then just sort of ironing on top, I'll usually, I'm right-handed, so the iron will be in my right hand. I'll usually always use my left hand to sort of like smooth as I go. Sometimes I might even hold it taut and then um, I'll have the pressure of the iron on the other end of the fabric and then you can just get the fabric under a bit of tension as you iron. So if you've got quite a lot of creases in your fabric, then putting the fabric sort of under tension as you iron it can help get those creases out and um, there will also be instances where you want to iron or press something but you don't you don't need to put quite as much pressure on so when you're sewing wool for example so this this bit of fabric I've got here is, is quite a thick sort of dense wool and if you put too much pressure on it as you're sewing sometimes the sort of outline of the seam behind can start to show through a little bit so you could use a, a pressing cloth in that situation. Um, pressing cloths just need to be, they need to be made of natural fibres, so cotton really is going to be the best option. So this is just a bit of calico that I've got. Um, so you can you can place that over the top and then, then just iron on top of that. And with wool, what I normally do is I, I, I won't press as hard, I'll more kind of hover with lots of steam and I'll smooth it out with my hand as I go and that just helps to kind of sort of relax all the fibres of the wool and um, if you if you're sort of pressing it really really hard as I said sometimes you can just get that outline of the seam coming through a little bit um, so yeah I, with wool I tend to kind of hover more and sort of smooth it out whilst I'll put pressure on it sometimes but probably not as much as I would with say like a cotton or, or something a cotton lawn and um, so so yeah just depending on your fabric you might have to um, kind of adjust that a little bit and then the other tip that is quite good to just sort of watch out for is that when you are pressing seams open or you've turned something inside out and you're sort of pressing it flat is to always always make sure that you've got that that stitch line or that seam line right at the right at the sort of edge where you're opening it out so say you've sewn a seam like this one here and you need to press the seam allowances open then um i would do it with the seam allowances facing up towards me and i would open out the fabric below and then with my left hand um, providing a bit of tension and then my right hand on the iron to do that sort of counter pressure you the, you you'll sort of open the seam out underneath so you can press the seam allowances to one side first of all and then you can press one of the seam allowances back sort of back on itself a little bit and then you are going to get this you know the, the seam as it's pressed open will be fully open sometimes it, it can be it can be hard to get it exact as that if you just sort of plonk it down in whatever way it falls you kind of put the iron on top you need to kind of be a little bit more precise in that and control it and put the fabric in the position that you want it to and um, the same if you're turning something inside out you know I, I use that sort of that kind of rolling technique and um, just to to get to make sure you get the seam fully kind of opened out um, and, it, and it can just give you a much better shape and a much better finish so I hope you find that useful to see all of those different things. Please ask me questions if you if you want clarification on anything or you're struggling with something and you want a little, little bit of extra help with it. Um, but thanks for watching guys and remember to subscribe if you um, haven't already so you don't miss out on the next video and we'll see you next time. Bye!